Go find your basket of fruit and pick out an apple you think looks good. Now using a sharp cutting knife, carefully cut the apple at a slight diagonal so that it slices right through the center of the apple core. While we're here, let's save two of the seeds because we'll be needing them later. Now that we've got our two halves, let's take the side that still has the bottom attached and place it face down on a cutting board. We'll need to place two butter knives perpendicular with the top and bottom of the apple. Now we can carefully cut down along one side of the apple core until the knife bottoms out on our makeshift spacers, then use the spacers as a guide to gently cut in from the side. When the two cuts meet, you'll have an apple wedge that pops right out. And while we're here, let's cut a piece from the other side the same way. Now our goal with these is to cut out three more L-shaped wedges about a quarter inch thick. And this time, rather than cutting in sideways toward your fingers, try turning the piece over so you can cut downward and meet the first cut at the bottom. Now with a little wiggle, a new apple wedge should break free. If you repeat the process two more times, then stagger the pieces back together, the effect is a beautifully layered wing. Now just cut the other piece the same way and your swan's body should look like this. To make a place for the head, all we need to do is carefully cut into the front of the body and gently lift the pieces out to reveal a clean and fairly deep groove. At this point we can go ahead and grab the other half of the apple and place it between the butter knives like before, but this time we're just going to use them as spacers to cut an even slice off the bottom. You can see that repeating this process three or four times gives us a nice variety of shapes and sizes. Now look for a piece that resembles a heart that's been slightly flattened on top. All it takes to form the swan head is three strategic cuts with a knife. I made one angled cut to form the head, a horizontal cut to form the neck, and one slatted cut at the bottom for the base. Now you should be able to see how this is coming together, and to clean it up a bit, just use your knife to round off the sharp edges. All that's left now is to place the apple seeds where you think the eyes should go, then use the side of a butter knife to press them firmly into position. When both eyes look good, simply drop the neck into place, and you're done. You've just created a beautiful and decorative apple swan. I spritzed mine with a bit of lemon juice to help prevent it from turning brown, then put it on display to show off for our dinner guests later that night. If you try using different apples, you'll get a nice contrast of colors, and every bird will look a little bit different. Well, now you know how to take any ordinary apple and turn it into a decorative and edible apple swan. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com.